Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another time in your word today. We receive revelation knowledge from your word and we pray that by the time we are done, we will be able to see of a truth that we have heard from you and not from man. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, this morning, I will be sharing on what I titled the choice. The choice. The word choice is an interesting word that has about three connotations. One is it is called selection. That is the act of selecting. The art of selecting. Secondly, opinion. Uh, sorry, options. Options. That's the power to select. Power of choosing. Options. And thirdly, cream. That is the best of a thing, of a group of things, or a selection of things. This word is a word that is used often, and if you look at how it, is, it plays out in everything around you, you will find out that one way or the other, whether you are aware of it or you are not aware of it, you are making choices. In things you do daily, you make choices. You decide to go or not to, call or not to go. It's a choice. You decide to eat or not to eat. You decide what to eat and what not to eat. You decide what to wear and what not to wear. The power of choice. You make choices about who to speak to, who not to speak to. You make choices about where to go and where not to go. It's a power that you have. In fact, sometimes your indecision is a choice that you have made about something else for, your, for yourself, regardless of whether you know it or not. And choices, I see God doing, using choices a lot in the way he acts and behaves and um, he responds to us as well. And it's quite interesting how God uses choices. But God does not use choices by uh, chance. It's planned for him. You know, I see stories of creation where God had to make choices. In the cre in story of creation, God created the heavens and the earth. And you see how he created every other thing, the lights. Let there be light. Let there be firmament. Separate the waters from, the, from on, in above and, and waters down here. Just speaking and getting those things to happen. Let there be I created animals by just speaking and all that. But it got to the point of creating man. And there, there seemed to be like there was a difference. You know, it felt, it, it felt like God said, no, wait, this choice, I have to make thinking about it. You know, and he said, Genesis 1, 26, let us create man in our own image, in our likeness. Praise God. He chose man. He chose mankind over every other animal, every other creation he made. Praise God. At the fall as well, God had to make a choice. When he was talking to Adam, Eve, and the serpent, you know, he, 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 he opened up and told them that, look, this you have done, and this is what is going to be the repercussion, what is going to happen to you. But for man, even at that point, we saw that he chose man even over the serpent because from that moment he started a plan to redeem man. He chose man over the serpent, over every other animal. Now life continued, the world continued, and things kept going. At a point, the world was full and filled with evil. And God thought, what do I do? He, he had to look for someone to choose. He chose another man, Noah. He used Noah to gather people to preserve the earth 
and he did what, what he needed to do to, to, make the, to bring back the world to sanity. Praise God. Then afterwards, he chose another man, Abraham. But Abraham, in choosing Abraham, he chose a whole lineage. So he had a covenant with Abraham. Then he had a covenant with his son. Then with his son, son, and all. That whole lineage, there was a choice made. There was a choice made. If we, are, we look at all these things, I'm, I'm trying to line up some of these things so that by, by the time we're looking at it all, we will see that in making all those choices, God thought about it. And not only that he thought about it, he thought about you and me in making all those choices. You know, so he chose Abraham and he had a, a relationship with him, relationship with his, family mem with his family lineage, and that went on. At a point... He said he chose a nation, Israel. He started dealing with a nation, Israel. It looked like he started opening up, you know, at the beginning with Adam. Adam was the representation of mankind, you know, but it felt like it was, it, 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 after the fall, he streamlined it. But at this point, he started opening it up again. He chose a nation. And he started dealing with Israel started pushing everything towards Israel. And it was a pointer for every part, everyone in the world that there's going to be a time that you're going to be enjoying the same or even better privileges that Israel is going to be, a, 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 that Israel is enjoying presently. But God chose a nation. Then Jesus came and God made known to us why Jesus came again. Um, and which is a very, very common verse we know, John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world. God chose the world. He, made it, he, made it, he brought it to the largest of it and said, hey, I choose the world. Praise God. I choose the world. God's choices are intentional. It's an art for God. It's power also for him. At the same time, he always chooses the creme de la creme, according to his own definition. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His choices are intentional. His choices are his plans. His plans define what he chooses. So God does not choose by mistake. Unlike human beings, who, when, when we say we don't make a choice of something, we don't decide for something, but in not deciding for something, we are deciding for something else. No. God decides. He chooses because he has a plan. And that plan must be fulfilled. So he chooses. We often choose what we love and what we have passion for. Praise God. We often choose what we love and what we have passion for. You know, um, I've, I've, of course, growing up and having a number of friends, in fact, as pastoring as well, I've seen a lot of this happen. So you see a young man, see a lady, and he just likes the girl, and he chooses the girl. You know, and people are asking him questions, what exactly did you see in this girl? And it's hard to answer that question most times, such that the third party will understand. You know how it is, what did you really see in her? And you're thinking and you're wondering, what did I really see in her? You're just, well, I, just, I just like her. And that's it. And people are telling you, are showing you other options. And like, this is better. This is, no, this is who I want. This is who I want. You know, and you, you know interestingly, even to the detriment of, your, of, you, of yourself sometimes, you know, some people have pre-information about who you've chosen. And they will tell you, this person uh, is not exactly. But you've chosen. Why? Choices. Making choices is a matter of the heart. It's a thing of the heart. Once your heart picks it, it is. Praise God. Praise God. Once your heart picks it, it is. It's a, cho it's a matter of the heart. It is always hard to give reasons to the third party. Why? You have chosen this and getting the third party to understand because it's a matter of the heart. It's your heart. Your heart has chosen. Your heart has make, made a selection. And most times it's hard to change that. Praise God. So why is it? Uh, why is it that this happens? It's simply a matter of the heart. God chose. God loves the world. He chose the world. 
God has a plan for the world because of the love he wants to bestow on the world and he chose the world. God loves me because of the plans he has for me and he chose me. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. No wonder the Bible says that God's heart, his mind is full of you. Psalms 8 verse 4 says, what is man that you are mindful of him? God is thinking about you every time because he has made a choice in you. God is looking out for you every time because he has made a choice of you. God is running after you always because he has made a choice in you. God has chosen you because he loves you. Because he wants to pour his out, he wants to pour so much love on you, you know, and and that's 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 it for God. You know, sometimes people ask and they're, they're wondering what is God looking for in this person, but really, what are you looking for in that person that people say is no good for you? It's simply because you have chosen the person, you love the person, and all you are thinking about every time, from time to time, all you are thinking about is how do I make this person better how do i improve this person's life the same thing the same way is how god is relating with you and i the same way is how god is relating with you and i brethren god loves us he has made a choice in us he had the power of options he picked us as the as his option he had the power to choose the best of the best to him you look like the best and he chose you as the best he has a choice. He, 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 he decided to, 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 to ex express a part of him, the art of selecting, of choosing. And he looked for you. And he selected you. He chose you. Praise God. He chose you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 9. The Passion translation gives a lot of light to this. I'll read it. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 4 to 9. It says, And he chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? It is, it is really not that you are holy, but because God loves you, he chose you, and he, he, he needs to be around holiness. He says that he used his love, he poured his love around you so that you will be seen as holy in his sight, so that he can relate with you. That is deep love. That is deep love. I've had stories of, 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 of people uh, people, young men who fell in love with um, people who are the people of the, you know, the, the, um, those, the dark street people, you know. And somehow, regardless of the lady's attitudes, her ways, I know, I know this personally, this guy kept going out for her looking out for her in that her mess because of the love he has for her because he has chosen her he keeps trying to get her out of that mess keeps working on her until he was able to get her out of that mess imagine just use that as an imagination that's the way God sees you and I even in your mess but because he wants to relate with you he covers you with his arms of love he says that he has um, yeah so because of his great love he ordained us so that we will be seen as holy in his eyes with, our un, with an unstained innocence praise God so that we will be seen as holy in his eyes God is after you Praise God. For it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children. Through our union with Jesus, the anointed one. So it was in his plan. Remember I told you, it, it is his plan. His plan. He, he has planned it. This plan has been there from the onset. So God's choices 
is based on his plan. And if you see God's choice, the Bible tells us here, where we just read it, it says he has, he has chosen us to be joined unto himself even he, before he laid the foundation of the universe. So it's his plan to have you as his own. It's his plan to keep you as his own. So he is doing everything to reach to you. He is doing everything to lavish on you his love. Just to be able to get your attention to him. Just to be able to, ask to, for, you to for you to see that same love that is bestowing towards on you and is pushing towards you and to be able to accept it. He says that, verse 5 again, for it is always in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children. And that was what happened in, in Genesis when he was talking to the serpent that he said, he said that when, when, when he started to, to, to reveal the plans of rede redeeming man, that, you know, devil, you think you have taken this one. No. Uh, this one I have chosen. I am coming back for this one. I am going to come back to redeem this one. It was in his it has always been in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children. Imagine the, your, the delight you have on a child. Imagine the delight you have on a child you love so much. That's how God is rejoicing over you every time. That's how God is rejoicing over you. Whenever he looks at you, whenever he sees you, that's how he's rejoicing over you. Why? He has made a choice in you because you are the cream, the la cream. He has made a choice in you because to him, you are holy. He, he, he wants you with him. He has set you apart. He has, he has set you apart for himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Through our union with Jesus Christ, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. Oh, glory to God. Imagine how much love God has for Jesus. The Bible says that that same love he has for you. Glory to God. That same love he has for you. Oh, glory to God. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. And this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. Since we are joined to... Let me not rush over that. It says this great unfolding great plan. <laughs> this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. So he's rejoicing as he's seeing that. So God has a plan for you to be listening to this today. He planned it. That's why you're listening. And what he's trying to do with this is to communicate to you how much he loves you. To communicate to you that he has chosen you. To communicate to you that you are selected. You have been set apart for him. He has seen in you something good and he loves that and he wants to make you the best you can become. So even if you are looking at yourself today and you are looking at your life and you are thinking, what is my life? What am I what? How, how, how can God be looking for me? Don't worry, you can't understand. Just like the story of the guy who, who, is, look, who is running after this girl who you don't even understand why he's running after her. It's the same way, you can't understand. But he has chosen you and it's a matter of his heart because you are there in his heart. He has chosen you. He's coming for you every time. That's why when you are going around, you hear somebody telling you about God, talking to you about God. God is after you. It's a message he's sending to you. And what he's saying to you this morning is that, look, 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 look. You don't have to be anything. All you need to do is to receive me as I have come to you because I have chosen you. And I am surrounding you with my love so that in my eyes you are holy. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's coming for you. And this unfolding plan, it's giving him great pleasure. He's happy that this is happening. He's happy that you are listening to this. He's happy that he's able to communicate to you how much he loves you. He's happy to, that he's able to communicate to you that you are chosen. You have been selected. You are the option he chose when he had several other options to pick from. He says you are the option he chose because he has a plan for you. Because he has a plan for your life. Because he has planned you into everything he has taught. His mind, open God's mind now. You are there. 
He's thinking about you. Thinking about what you are going through presently and he's thinking about how to communicate and pass um, opportunities to you to help you to be out of that. He's thinking about you. His mind is full of you. His mind is full of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. When a man loves a lady, it doesn't matter how dirty she is. He goes all out to clean her up for himself. When God loves you, it doesn't matter how bad you are. He has chosen you. <laughs> he goes all out, sending messages to you through several means, several avenues, just to be able to reach you, to clean you, to take you to himself and clean you. He is the one that washes you clean. Not any man. You can't even do it yourself. All he's saying is, come, I have chosen you. I'm so, I've surrounded you with my love. Come to me. Receive. Accept me. Receive this work. That's all he's saying to you. And you will see the changes come to you. Because, you know, before, before that verse 4, he says that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, that's Ephesians 1, 3, Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a loved gift from our wonderful heavenly father, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our hearts. All because he sees you wrapped into Christ. All because he sees you wrapped into Christ. What does that mean? All because he sees that you have accepted the walk that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Once, you are, once you've accepted that walk, you are wrapped into Christ. Glory to God. Because you are in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You, when you receive that walk, you stepped into Christ. And the change has started for you. Praise God. So this morning, I, I just want to make a call, a quick call to you. If you are out there and you think that God cannot accept you, no, I have come to tell you differently. Before you did everything you think you did, God chose you. Before you stepped into those territories that you think you have stepped into that make God not to love you, God loved you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves you. God wants you. God wants you. God loves you. And I'm going to make a call to you right now. I want to, if, if you're out there and you're wondering what is next for me, I don't even know where this is going. I am confused and I've heard about this Jesus, but I'm not sure I, I, I really want this Jesus. <laughs> he's out for you and he's calling on you because he loves you. If you're out there today and you want Jesus to Come into your heart and be the Lord of your life so that you start to enjoy this every spiritual blessing that has been lavished on you as a loved love gift. This is your time. It's not a hard thing to do. In fact, it's something you can do right there where you are seated. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. And once you say this prayer, you have stepped into the fold. You are in the house already. So if you're out there and you're saying, I, I want to know him more. I want to experience this love more. I want to understand the fullness of this love. You say this prayer with me and you are born again. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I receive you, Jesus, into my life as the Lord and Savior of my life. I renounce the devil and I accept you, Jesus, to rule in my life. From this moment, I declare that I am born again. I am a child of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. If you said that prayer, you are born again. If you said that prayer, you have stepped into the family and you start to enjoy the fullness of these spiritual blessings that has been lavished upon you by your heavenly father as a love gift from him. You are born again. Enjoy this life. Remember, you are chosen, you are loved, and God is after you 24.
hours, seven days in the week. Glory to God. God bless you and we'll see you again next time. Amen. Olubenga Soya leads a network of Covenant Light Churches. Connect with him on Instagram at Olubenga Soya. We would like to thank our friends and partners for making today's broadcast possible. If you enjoyed today's message or would like more information, do visit our website at www.covenantlight.org.